Inside of the skull is the brain. The cerebrum, which is the biggest part of the brain, has a very uneven surface. The portion that sticks out is the gyrus, and the portion that is caved in is the sulcus. Among the sulcus, the deepest one is the lateral sulcus. The cerebrum can be divided into two hemispheres. The gap between the two hemispheres is called the longitudinal fissure. The two hemispheres are not fully separated and are connected. Meanwhile, the cerebrum is formed of the cerebral cortex and cerebral medulla. The dark cerebral cortex is called the gray matter and the light cerebral medulla is called the white matter. In the cerebrum, there is a space which contains spinal cord fluids and this is called the ventricle. Downwards, not only the cerebrum, but also the cerebellum and brainstem can be seen. Since the cerebrum is still a big portion here, it can be known that the cerebrum is much larger than the cerebellum and brainstem. The cerebellum is larger than the brainstem. The cerebrum, cerebellum, and brainstem all together are called the brain. The nerves that come from the brain are the cranial nerves. There are 12 pairs of cranial nerves, and they convey sensory impulse and sensory movement. The cranial nerves we talk about here also includes the optic nerves. They convey sensory impulse from the retina to the brain. Just like how the brain is in the skull, the spinal cord is in the vertebral column. Similar to how cranial nerves are made from the brain, spinal nerves are made from the spinal cord. The spinal nerves were named due to how they pass the vertebrae. The other spinal nerves are named chest nerves, lumbar nerves, and sacral nerves. Like this, the spinal nerves are named similar to the vertebral column they pass, and the number of spinal nerves per vertebral column is similar as well. Spinal nerves convey sensory impulse and sensory movements of the torso, arms, and legs. I will follow the spinal cords. Do you see how the spinal cord has disappeared? At the height of the lumbar vertebrae, instead of the spinal cord, you can see the lumbar nerves and sacral nerves, which are both spinal nerves. These spinal nerves are floating in cerebrospinal fluid. Therefore, if you give an injection here, you can extract cerebrospinal fluid without damaging the spinal nerves. On this sectioned image, you can see the intervertebral disc, which is in between the lumbar vertebrae. The intervertebral disc is white since it is a cartilage. When this falls out of place, 
it presses the spinal nerves and cause a problem. This is called a disc. The spinal nerves you see now goes downwards and convey sensory and motor impulses and movements for the pelvis, groin, and legs.